Hello again, I am Jim Bob, and welcome back to Fells Run Farm. I am taking the remaining bales from the field over to sell them. It took me a little while to stack the trailer, but not as long as last time. Uh, for two reasons. One, I've had a little bit of practice at stacking round bales again now, so a little bit quicker with that. And also, less bales, so naturally going to be quicker. Uh, do still have that one errant bale that's left out on the side of the road somewhere from when it went flying off our forks when our trailer tipped. So we need to go and add that to the pile. Uh, so we'll take the same kind of route minus the stop at the BGA. And hopefully the bales will be a little bit more uh, well behaved this time out. Although I think I can already see a couple that have slipped and moved ever so slightly. So I'm not holding that much hope. Uh, I think I'm going to get rid of the round baler. In fact, I don't think. I know. I'm going to get rid of the round baler. Uh, now, we do still have a whole second field that needs to be collected. Uh, and we're not going to let that straw go to waste. We're going to get ourselves, uh, even if we just lease it, uh, we're going to get ourselves a loading wagon. We're going to pick that straw up, take it down to the barn, sell it off. And then, if I can afford it, I'll try and replace the round baler with a square baler. Hopefully, the square bales will be a bit more... Um, stable on this trailer I'm wondering if it, they're only bouncing around so much and uh, trying to break free of the straps because they're round bales and and the straps don't really cover all of the bales they only cover some of them and the rest are kind of locked in place by the bales around them I think that's probably what's causing that instability in the stack and causing them to wobble all over the place either way uh, whatever the reason is you know it's not good yeah, and, and we can't have a trailer that's A, trying to sh shake itself apart, or B, trying to flip itself over uh, every time we want to sell some bales, because it's just going to be a nightmare. So uh, we'll ditch the round baler and replace it with a square if we can afford it. The problem is the square baler is expensive, very expensive. Uh, it's going to be way beyond our budget for now anyway. Oops. <sighs> took out a sign it's actually wedged on my forks <laughs> whoops uh, I'm carrying the evidence with me that's not good I put my beacons on as well because it, it's at this point when I really do start to become a threat to other traffic with my bale trailer potentially about to just explode bales all over the place I need to go nice and carefully around the roundabout do not want to give it any excuse to tip oh he says mounting the curb and taking out more signs there we go and it was about this point last time out that the trailer suddenly just started going nuts we should be okay this time the stack is smaller there's less bales on it as well i don't really think it's intended for you to stack three high with uh, square with round bales on this trailer so that might have been another reason why as well. Just too much weight pushing down on the stack. Who knows? Uh, I've got to keep my eye out. I'm trying to remember where it was when I lost the trailer. I think it was just somewhere around this next junction that we lost it. So the bale should be somewhere around here. Maybe a little bit further along. Maybe the next junction. But there is, as I say, one leftover round bale lurking somewhere out here that needs to be collected. Oh, there it is. I can see it. So I'm going to be a little bit naughty, and I'm actually going to block the uh, the lane ever so slightly. There we go. Let's disconnect. Let's grab the bale. Hopefully we're not going to hold up any traffic. I'm not seeing any at the moment, which is good. Zoom in a bit so I can see what I'm doing. Get lined up. That looks pretty good. I'm going to make sure I don't get hit from the other side now as well. A little bit of movement every time I take a strap off. There's a little bit of a, a, a twitch. 
It gets me very nervous given what happened last time. Spin around. I'm trying to approach at a slight angle because of the way the bale is on the fork. It's not square on the fork. go and we'll strap those back down again all right just got clear of the road there let's uh, head on over to the barn get these sold see how much money we raise Ooh, I'm thinking probably uh, somewhere in the region of about eight grand maybe and then go sell the baler get ourselves a loading wagon, sell the rest of the straw, and then see how much money we've got. Well, this snack has been actually very well behaved, and it makes me wonder as to whether it was perhaps a glitch that caused the trailer to just shake itself to pieces, or at least the load to shake itself to pieces. There's just too many variables, you know, at this stage. Uh, it could be the game, it could be the trailer, it could be the bales, it could be a whole manner of different things. Uh, it's kind of a little bit, unfortunately, um, impossible to uh, differentiate exactly what the problem is. But there we go. We made uh, seven and a half, nearly eight thousand. A little, just a couple hundred short of uh, eight thousand. That's not too bad. So we're sitting on 21 and a bit. It's not a bad little total. Uh, <laughs> I was just checking my indicators were actually switched off and shortcutting the grass at the same time without realising. Uh, so we'll head back to the farm. There are a few kind of bits of equipment I've been looking at for further forward uh, that I've got my eye on, but uh, I haven't seen something that I can really afford or justify just yet. Oh, this is a bit awkward. That's quite a, a sharp turn to go against that junction there. There we go. Uh, we'll shortcut this way. And this will take us back pretty close to the mountain pass. Uh, it gives you a, a really good, actually, if we look here, it gives you a really good indication of just how high up our farm is compared to uh, you know the ground level over here it really is a huge elevation change and our farm sits right at the very top kind of where that little red nodule is on the power line directly center of the screen that there is where our farm is up there it's way up in the hills massive differential in height I'm not going to see it for a while, but I think actually we can just make out the edge of the house. Just peeking over the top of the hill there. It's really tough to tell from this angle, but it is up there. So I'll get back to the farmhouse. Pick up the baler, take that down to the store, get it sold, and uh, check in with you at that point. Okay, we have arrived at the store with the baler. Let's get this dropped off. I'm going to keep hold of the trailer, potentially, for now, because if we're going to get a square baler, then we're still going to need it. Because, again, we're still going to produce the same number of bales. They're just going to be a different shape. Let's turn the engine off. Get that sold. Ah, wow, look at that. <laughs> We've had it for one day, and it's dropped down to 42 grand. That's... Uh, Quite a big depreciation on that, uh, considering it cost us, what, 58, was it? Was it 58? Let's have a look. Let's see how much we paid for it. 49. Oh, actually, that's not too bad. 49. Um, they used to be 58, so they're, they're cheaper this time out, which is good. But 105 is what we need for that one there. Now, we could potentially just upgrade to this baler at some point instead. Stick with round bales and then go silage baling. And make some money that way, but uh, I don't know, maybe not. Uh, I'd, I'd rather have a square baler. This is going to be easier to manage, I think, going forward. 
uh, at least with with things as the way they are right now. So uh, we need uh, a loading wagon because we still have a lot of straw that we need to get rid of. And the cheapest one here is 46, so that's within our budget. That one's a little bit beyond our budget. I would like to try this, um, the Rapide. Uh, it's 100,000 though. Uh, we can afford it in terms of power. We've got 175 horsepower on our blue power T6. And this has a, needs 150, so we could we could use that one. It's just a bit expensive, really. Uh, so we'll try this one. This one is new, anyway. Uh, this is the Stroutman Zelon CFS 2501DO. Uh, they just love it when they have these really long-winded names. We'll just call it the uh, the Stroutman. Uh, this is the new small one, 23,000 litres. It's not a bad price, but it's still quite pricey comparing it against the price of the old Pottinger that we had, which was about 20-something last time out for a similar kind of capacity. Maybe a little bit more than 20. Maybe it's about 30. But even so, this is more expensive, but uh, it is a very nice, shiny piece of equipment. Uh, something new, something we haven't used before. And it'll be a great way for us to continue to sell straw uh, as a byproduct from our harvests and get that extra income. So we'll buy this. Uh, and while I'm, while I'm down here at the store as well, what I want to do is check to see, now that we've harvested on field two, does that now need uh, to be limed? Let's have a look. No, it doesn't. Excellent stuff. And of course, we don't need to plow because we haven't planted uh, the relevant crops. So uh, just as a refresher for those that missed it in my overview video, uh, plowing now only needs to be done after certain crops. Uh, so uh, if I can remember where that is. Uh, plowing. Uh, nope. It did say somewhere in here. I think it was in advanced knowledge, perhaps. Which fields, uh, which crops? Oh, here we go. Improving yield. So, uh, you need to plow uh, after you plant corn, or after you harvest corn, potatoes, sugar beets, and sugar cane. Those are the four crops that need you to then plow again afterwards so plowing could now potentially be after every harvest if you're planting corn every time if you never plant corn potatoes beets or sugarcane apart from maybe that one time when you take over the field you'll never have to plow but you will now have to spread lime every three harvests instead so we don't have to worry about leasing a lime spreader that's good uh, we don't need to worry about another plow for a while so let's take this back to the farm. We can speed our time back up again now as well. Now that we've got all that bailing out of the way. Yeah, beacons on? Nope. Now they are. Uh, yeah, we'll get the rest of the, the, uh, the loose material off the fields and we'll be able to see as well if we'll get more for selling our material loose than bailed. I think we probably will. Uh, although we may well potentially tank the market. I'm still not 100% convinced that the market price doesn't fluctuate after tipping. Uh, I do think it does go down a little bit. It's just maybe not quite so severe and it might re rebound a little bit quicker. We do still kind of need to do a bit more sort of testing on that and we can't do that until we sell in bulk again. So uh, the straw will be a, a useful kind of little indicator to that and we'll really kind of get more of an idea when we start selling crops in bulk. So the next uh, round of planting, I'm going to plant the same crop on both fields to give us a really good yield. And I'm going to go to the old traditional favourite uh, for money making, which is soybean. And we'll get a nice good yield of soybean in. That'll give us a good injection of cash. And we can use that to start funding an expansion on our farm. We're still a long way off being able to buy more land and more fields. I mean, there are small fields out there, but I want to try and keep everything close to the farm itself. And because of where we are, I mean, yeah, we're kind of a little isolated at the moment. And we, you know, field three will be the next logical choice because that's up where we are. 
You see, we're really struggling up the hill again. Even without this uh, Stratman loading wagon, we would still be losing a bit of speed going up this hill anyway. Not much, but a little bit. It is quite a steep gradient. It's deceptively steep. Our tractor really does kind of struggle up here a little bit. Especially in, in the corners, when it kind of tightens up a little bit, both the, uh, the gradient and the radius. But we can employ this straight away, straight into action. See how quickly it fills up as well. 23,000 is the equivalent of uh, nearly eight bales. Nearly. And we saw we got 70 bales off the last one, so uh, we're going to get a lot of straw off of the field. It's going to be a lot of trips. That's the other thing we could potentially look at as well is maybe investing in a bigger truck. You know, or a, tr uh, a truck and, ma and a bigger trailer, something to allow us to shift, m you know, a lot of stuff in quick, in quick order. Again, though, we're kind of stuck for cash. I mean, the the way we went about setting our farm up meant that we had a really, really nice farm, with a couple of fields and uh, enough starting equipment, and then no wiggle room for expanding until we earn cash. Uh, we don't have any real loan that we can take out. I think, in fact, I think I maxed it back out again to get the baler. So we can't rely on borrowing from the bank. And we do have to kind of pay off our loan as quickly as we can to stop getting hammered with those increased overdraft fees that we're getting every night. They are you know, quite steep. And they're definitely going to hurt our growth a little bit. Right, let's get this lowered down. There we go. Get it turned on. Oops. Still get caught out by the uh, the new steering mechanics from time to time. I do like them though. It's now that I've got used to them. Uh, I do prefer the uh, slightly. I wouldn't say delayed, but the slightly less reactive steering. You know, with the way it's currently set. Obviously, you can tighten it up or you can loosen it even more. But I actually like where it's sat at the moment. It just feels uh, a little bit more authentic, a little bit more natural, a bit more realistic. Uh, and I'm loving, absolutely loving the uh, the way that the engines do their engine braking a little bit more gradually now. Uh, so if I slow down. Yeah, you can see we didn't grind to a stop really, really quickly. We slowed down a bit. Uh, and also, and I can't slow down a bit because we're actually running a machine a bit faster than normal. Uh, but also at low speed, you do can tend to just keep rolling just a little bit. Uh, I like that. I really do. There's no lurching to a sudden stop anymore just by touching the brakes. It's much more gradual, much more controlled. Let's see, we've got uh, nearly 16,000 off a single pass. Yeah, we're going to end up with many, many trips. So a larger capacity would have been better for us. Maybe I should have leased a larger one rather than actually buying the smaller one. Benefit of hindsight. And there we go. So if we check... Uh, the store, the only place to sell this is going to be uh, the barn, which unfortunately <laughs> is a, a bit of a trek. Let's see, where are we? I'm looking for the quick way. The quick way is going to be down the wind path and then cutting between fields uh, 6 and 7, um, and then down between 17 and 18, and then loop around to the dealership and the barn that way. It'll be quicker than the route we took with the bales. It'll be essentially the reverse of the route we took on the way back to the farm. But it's a lot of trips to clear that straw off the field. So I'm going to kind of uh, jump ahead a bit because there's going to be a lot of this. Uh, I'll see you when we sell the first load and then I'll sell a few more loads before I check in with you again. So I'll see you at the barn. Right, so, uh, eight bales at uh, an average of 500 euros per bale, nets 4,000. So we need to kind of clear 
if we clear 4,000 with a little under seven bales worth of straw here, and that's, I think, slightly generous on the bale price as well. I think they're around about 450 per bale. But if we clear uh, 4,000 or more, then, you know, we're going to make a profit. Let's see how much we make. Oops. That's quite a nice little unload uh, animation there. God, I hate this new... I say new. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> 887. Is that it? That can't be right. Is that all we made? I think we killed the price because we dumped a load of bales. 89 euros. That, that nah, doesn't look right. Or is it... Th I need to work this out with a calculator. Hang on a second. So we made what? Um, 889, I think it was. Uh, we divide, or let's see. Uh, okay, so that works out at about, <laughs> um, no, I've got that completely wrong in, on my calculator. Hang on a sec. So, uh, 889, and we divide that by 8, which is the equivalent price, means we're getting 111.125 euros per bale on that price. That is terrible. I think I've just made a huge, huge mistake. Q. Will Arnett from uh, Arrested Development. I made a huge mistake. Yeah, if that's going to be how much money we're going to get selling loose against how much we would make selling bales, that is a staggering difference. It's always generally been that bales have their fixed price and it's not as good as selling loose, but it's a consistent fixed price. Whereas loose, you'll get much more, but if you sell in bulk, then you suffer as the market dips. That's how it was in 17. Uh, it appears that in 19 you're going to get screwed <laughs> selling loose compared to bales. That's terrible. Absolutely terrible price. Um, I could have sworn we were getting more than that. I'm going to load up, do another run, see how much we get for that run, and check the market prices again afterwards and see if they've changed. Um, but I'm slightly concerned here, and we may, have to, we may well have to go back to bailing. To, to make money or we may just have to ignore the straw altogether um, yeah I need to seriously think about this going forward okay the uh, trailer is loaded up again and we're gonna go ahead and uh, run that down but regardless of whether we end up working the rest of that field and getting all the straw out that way or uh, if we just go screw it and get rid of it just uh, seed and cultivate over the top of it we do need to crack on with getting our fields turned over so while we're sort of uh, working on that field there we can use the fence to uh, to run the the loading wagon and uh, we can allocate our new Holland with a worker to seeding. So I just need to top the seed levels up and also the fertilizer levels. Let's try and zoom in, put the lights on as well so I can see where my forks are in the shade. There we go. I really hope that uh, camera collision uh, disable mod turns up soon. Because the cameras on this are driving me insane. The way it keeps zooming in and out. I still don't understand why that's no, not an option in the game. Because 
as soon as that mod comes out, almost everybody uses it. Not everybody, but most people use it. So why it's not a toggleable option that you can turn on and off, like crop destruction or ploughing or lime or any of those things, why it's not a base game option, I just don't know. It's kind of frustrating. So we've just got to wait for that mod to make its appearance now. Like I said, hopefully it won't be too far away. Uh, and I'm using the spikes here, and I'm able to... <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'm using the spikes, and I'm still able to uh, kind of manipulate the pallets. Uh, so I don't need to use the pallet forks for this, which is quite handy. There we go. Uh, the, there isn't a need for a full pallet in the next one, plus I don't think we'll need a full pallet anyway. At least not for one field. Let's get this uh, pallet fertilizer loaded as well. There we go. Just the one pallet of fertilizer, but again, we're only doing one field, so it doesn't matter if we don't have a full tank. It'll be enough for one of the two fields, and it'll still be uh, pretty well stocked. So, get off my yard, bird. There we go. I'll drop the spikes off over here, and there's that roll I was telling you about. Look, my finger's not on the accelerator, no cruise control just continued that low speed roll. I like that. I really do. That's such a nice little feature. So we'll drop that off. That bird's back again. Get him out of the way. There we go. Uh, don't need the lights on anymore. Don't need the beacons on. Get connected. There we go. Let's change the crop to soybean. There we go. That's the new soybean symbol. Still having to get used to the new symbols as well. I'm not quite sure why they changed them to slightly, I think, more cartoony versions. But uh, they are the new symbols, regardless. I get why they changed. Uh, why Why they thought it was a good time to change them because they were bringing new ones in for things like milk etc um, just not quite sure why they went quite so cartoony with the look of them there we go so worker is off and running we are seeding soybean on that field there and while we're doing that we're going to jump or while the workers do that we're going to carry on running back and forth to the barn at least initially and we'll do it in our fence spin this around. This is going to be a little bit slower. Uh, it's limited to 26 miles an hour, I think. Oh no, this is a 32 as well. Okay, that's not so bad. It is a little less powered though. It's only 150 horsepower in this as opposed to 175. So we may struggle going up the hills. And um, I just want to check something. Ah, no, okay. I thought the stop and go braking was uh, different in this tractor compared to the one I've just got out of, but it's not. It's just me. So let's head on over to the barn, and I'm going to be watching that price like a hawk this time. Uh, I was a little bit more casual about it last time, and then got a bit of a shock when I saw we only made 880 something. So I'll be watching like a hawk this time, see how much we get, and I'll check the prices in the store before and after to see the fluctuation, and let's see what we get this time out. Because this will determine whether or not we uh, keep the loading wagon and carry on stripping the field or whether we immediately run this straight back to the store and sell it, get our, as much of our money back as we possibly can and just scrap, scrap the rest of the straw. So our straw price at the moment is only 32 and dropping, uh, not ideal. It is, it is so much cheaper 
Well, so much less than if we were selling bailed. Look at that, 746, even less this time because the price has dropped, because uh, the market is declining now at 32. It hasn't dipped as a result of that sale. It's just naturally in a decline. So I think we need to get rid of this because it's just not worth it. I mean, we could buy a mower and we could use it to sell grass. Grass is actually three times the price at the moment. It's 94 I'm assuming that's supposed to be grass and not hay. This is the strange thing. There's no hay marker in here. The symbol for hay, if we take a look, is the kind of wiggly lines going across. Uh, and then the straight lines is for grass. And yet we look in here, we've got a price for grass, but no price for hay. Uh, I wonder if that's a glitch. A, well, when I say a glitch, I wonder if that's a bug and that should be the hay symbol and you can't sell grass at all. Uh, I don't want to have to spend money on a mower just to find out whether or not that's a bug when money is so tight for us. So uh, we're going to take this back to the store. Uh, we're gonna, just going to concede defeat. Uh, it turns out we should have stuck with the baler. We would certainly have made a lot more cash. I think. Maybe not, actually. Let's think. I'm trying to think how many bales I had on the trailer. Either way, it's not a great income. It's not really the big boost to our harvest that we would expect. So I think for the time being, going forward, we're just going to ignore uh, straw. And we'll just chop it. We, uh, and, and blow it on the fields, just as that visual particle, feel, uh, particle effect. Rather than you know, spend all that time. Uh, it's not just, you know, the low income. It's the distance that we have to travel and the fuel burn and the wear and tear that we're putting on on transporting it all the way to the other side of the map. Like from one corner all the way to the opposite diagonal corner. It's a long trip each way. So it's it's just not worth it. It's not worth us doing that so I'm going to uh, uh, I'm going to sell this uh, we'll concede defeat as far as bailing and uh, straw is concerned we'll revisit it at a, a later point uh, I'm probably going to get rid of the trailer as well because we don't need the trailer anymore seeing as it's going to be a long time before we get anywhere near the kind of money we need for a straw for a square baler you know we need a hundred thousand for that and We've got less than 20. Obviously, that's going to go up again in a minute. But uh, we'll get rid of the trailer as well. And we'll put our money towards investing in another field uh, before we look to get back into bailing again, I think. So it's going to be a long slog. Uh, there you can see we're losing cash again. It's going to be a long slog to get the money that we need. We'll get there, though. And I think we're going to have to be quite proactive with the contracting as well look for some of those big contracting jobs and uh, like like we got with the sugar beets the ones that actually pay out a decent kind of uh, total we'll have to take those on where we can and just keep grinding our crops and grinding our crops and maybe look at uh, other ways that we could potentially make some money we could look at maybe animals we could look at maybe getting some sheep involved and We'd need some equipment for that. We'd need a pen. We'd need the sheep themselves. Uh, we'd need a water trailer. We'd need, uh, at the very least, a mower. And <laughs> probably that, that wagon that we've just got rid of. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, uh, chickens might be a better option, perhaps. We could uh, just get a load of chickens in and make some money. Or we could, uh, we could get a, a horse paddock, maybe, and uh, start training some horses. That might be a better option, actually. Uh, again, we would need a way to feed the horses uh, and they would need straw as w and hay uh, on top of uh, well, at least they would need straw uh, on top of the oats uh, and I think hay as well is their other food type of, uh, if memory serves me correct so we would still need a way to add those things in and collect those things off off the ground so we would definitely need uh, to bring back some extra equipment. I need to think about how we're going to progress the farm. 
So uh, I'll, uh, I'll look for another contract when we get back to the farm and see what we can find, see if we can make some quick money this afternoon. So I've decided to drop in a chicken coop. Now this is more of a long-term investment than anything else because it's going to take us a little while to earn money with chickens, but it also gives us something else we can use our Mahindra for uh, in terms of ferrying those eggs back and forth. So uh, this is where our egg boxes will spawn. This is our uh, dialogue box here for our chickens. And we can open the gate and wander in if we want to. Uh, and then around the side... Uh, we have our pallet here for food. This is where we're dropping our food in, in the food trough. Uh, so, uh, chickens will want wheat. Now, we've unfortunately sold all of our wheat. I don't think we've got anything left. Let me check our silos. I think we sold it all. Yeah, we did. We've got a little bit of oats left, but we sold all of the wheat. So, we'll have to pick up some chicken food. Uh, and then obviously we need to pay for the chickens separately. Now this is the smaller of the two chicken pens. There's a small one and a large one. Uh, the small one uh, is a default cost of 20,000. And uh, will hold, I think, 100 chickens, was it? Let's take a quick look. That's the wrong menu. There we go. So uh, costs um, 20 euros a day in terms of upkeep. Uh, we'll hold 100 chickens. And... Uh, we can give them either wheat or barley or chicken food, uh, which we can buy in pallets, which is what we're going to have to do until our next harvest, where we get a crop that we can actually give them something. So maybe instead of doing uh, sugar beets, not sugar beets, soybean on both fields, maybe we actually have to go back and do wheat or barley on one of these two fields so that we've got uh, an ample supply of food for our chickens. Uh, and we still need to buy the chickens on top of that as well. And because of terraforming costs, we come over here, uh, because of the way that the ground is shaped, I, this is about the only spot I could really do it with minimal impact. Uh, we did end up terraforming the back here a little bit, uh, and so it actually cost me 35000 for the pen, not... Um, uh, not 20. What I'm also going to do is I'm probably going to lease a plough so I can get rid of this grass that's been dumped in as part of the placeable uh, on our path. Uh, so I can plough that out and then reset it back or maybe just lease the roller. Uh, and you don't need to plough and then uh, you know, first to remove whatever's there before you use the roller. Now it'll just delete pretty much anything. Or at least with grass fields anyway, that's the way it works. It might be a bit different with the placeable zone. We're going to go and run the trailer back here. We've got the Mahindra hooked up. Uh, and then we'll look for a contract while we're down there. Uh, and then we can use the Mahindra to obviously get back to the farm once we've completed the contract. So uh, I'll see you in a moment. So hopefully we'll get a, a good chunk of cash for the trailer. Uh, 15 grand, that's not bad actually. It's more than I thought we would get. So that's returned. Uh, we need to pay for our chickens. That could cost me a little bit. Uh, and we need to do that at the chicken coop itself. Uh, there is no way to deliver chickens in a, in a trailer, unfortunately. Uh, we can with the other animals, with uh, cows, sheep, pigs and horses, but with chickens it's buy them direct at the coop. Which means I think we'll probably get hit with a delivery charge as well, which is a bit of a, a double whammy. Uh, and that needs to be fixed if that's the case. Uh, so let's look for contracts. Let's see what we can do to raise some extra cash now that we've just spent a load. Uh, let's have a look what is available. Some uh, fertilising jobs. Lots of fertilising jobs. I've uh, got some harvesting down here. Uh, so not a particularly big one there or there. That's 10 grand. That's field 12. Is that the one we've already done, field 12? The one where the harvester kept getting stuck. It is. Yeah, that's the where the uh, we had issues with that combination of equipment last time. So although it pays well, I think we'll probably avoid that one. 
Uh, what else have we got? Field six. Ooh, cotton harvesting. That's quite a lot of cotton that needs to be harvested as well. And uh, they're giving us two harvesters. Now, we could run a worker in one of them, but uh, we wouldn't get paid for the second one. That's the field that needs to be harvested. I kind of like the idea of doing a cotton harvest. We could just leave one of those machines there. So, let's see. If we lease, that's going to reduce the payout down to about seven grand. But any leftover cotton will be able to uh, get a little bit of a bonus for. Uh, is there anything else that's worth looking at while we're still in the menu? Uh, oh, potato harvest with the new Grimmer self-propelled potato wagon. You know, I'm kind of curious about that one. Oh, we've got a good one here as well. Look, another potato harvest. This one's 16 grand. You know what? I think, I think we might take that instead. Field 9. Let's just take a quick look at Field 9. It's an awkward shape, isn't it? Um, yeah, we're going to take that potato contract. Because if it's like the beets, we can actually make quite a substantial amount selling off the extra stuff at the end once the contract itself is done and we have leftover crops. So, yeah, let's do that. Let's take this job on here. So, we need to lease the items. There we go. And now I need to park up the size of that trailer against our Mahindra. <laughs> there we go. We must remember to make sure we buy some chicken feed on the way back. And we can use the forklift to load it into the back of the Mahindra. I'll probably get see if I can squeeze two pallets in there. Stack them on top of each other. And if anything more than that, and that just increases the risk of that thing tipping over, I think. Uh, and we get to use, which fent is this? A 700, a 724. Okay, let's get that in position first of all. And we know this fent very well from Farming Sim 17, but it does look nice in here, doesn't it? Nice, very flush, very swish. Uh, so let's make our way over to field nine. Now it's time for this. Uh, this thing's huge, this Varatron. Look how long this thing is. And yet it only has... 10,000 litre capacity. It's tiny. That capacity is so small. Look at the length of this thing. This could be really quite awkward to steer. You know, with those wheels at the front, it almost reminds me of one of those, you know, uh, soapbox derby kind of uh, home builds. Someone's just built, you know, taken a wooden crate and stuck some wheels on it. <laughs> And controlling them with a piece of string to turn the axles at the front for steering. That's kind of what it reminds me of with those big wheels at the front stretched out all the way out there like that. You know, uh, or a drag car, a dragster. You know, with very thin, skinny wheels at the front and then obviously there's no monster wheels at the back. Instead we've got pivoting tracks. You can see the tracks do steer. But even so, I mean, this thing's huge. It's going to take a while to get there as well at only 15 miles an hour. So I'm going to cut ahead to the field and I'll see you once we get started. And as we actually see the field, I mean, <laughs> it actually looks a bit more of a daunting task. Uh, this is going to take me an eternity to do. Uh, I'm going to slow time down to real time right now because otherwise it's going to be night before I'm even halfway through this thing. So let's do that. Let's get this thing unfolded. Is that it? Oh, that's it. Uh, for some reason, I expected a bit more of it. No, never mind. Off we go. Well, it looks awesome. <laughs> it's just a shame that it has a, a 9,590 litre capacity. <laughs> that's nothing. 
Yeah, the last Grimmer that we had in 17, I think that was a Varitron as well, but a different model, obviously. Uh, that had a 20,000 litre capacity, and that thing filled up ridiculously quickly as it was. This, at 9,590, for the price that you have to pay for one of these as well, 496,000. That capacity is rubbish. Absolutely rubbish. It really is. You're going to be unloading this thing so frequently. Unless they've really dialed down the yield on potatoes. And maybe bumped the price a little bit. That's a possibility. Let's actually take a look at the price of potatoes. Where are spuds? Uh, no, prices are pretty much consistent with what we saw on 17. It's a turning angle like. That's not too bad. Considering the length of the thing. It's certainly not the uh, spin on the spot that we had last time out either so while it's a, a wonderfully awesome looking piece of machinery it does feel like in terms of what's available to us this particular piece of machinery feels like a step down from the last one uh, which had uh, a cheaper price uh, a much larger capacity twice the capacity and better steering <laughs> you could spin on the spot it was almost like a giant skid steer in that respect uh, this more cumbersome and uh, more expensive, less capacity. And the thing's huge. I don't know, it looks impressive, but I think maybe, maybe this field isn't going to be quite so intimidating. Maybe it's not going to be quite so bad. It's just we're seeing it from a different angle over this, over this way. Hmm, I don't know. I'm unconvinced at the moment. Uh, I'm just looking to see the spuds rolling through the belt. There's our storage bay. You see, we've got all that space for shuffling the potatoes around into that tiny, tiny little hopper there. You look at it first, you think that's the uh, spud area at the back. But no, it's that tiny little hopper there and it's... Uh, it's nearly three quarters, well it is about three quarters of the way full already. So I'm going to need the truck very, very soon. And this is what this thing looks like inside. And oh, it's impressive in here. Look how wonderful this is in here. Beautiful. I love those display screens on the side there. Uh, and also to the front. And again, you've got that long slung dragster feel. That low slung feel there at the front. It's all stretched out so far in front of us. Such an unusual vantage point on what we're used to seeing. Great visibility. Look at the mirrors on the side. We can actually see a mirror feeding into, you know, checking on the belt feed as well. Have to say, it's a very impressive piece of machinery to drive in. Just such a shame that the capacity on it is so small. But anyway, uh, this job is going to take ages. And we don't have much time available to us left uh, in the episode. So uh, I will pretty much see you right near the end of the job, I suppose. And hopefully we'll be sitting on a nice big stack of cash. So see you in a little while.
So this is the third trailer and this should be the final trailer required in terms of what needs to be delivered. We'll probably still have to do a little bit more harvesting on the field. A lot of it's done now. There's not a huge chunk left. But whatever we get left over, assuming that this is the final delivery, uh, will be ours essentially to do with what we want. And we're just going to probably sell it. Uh, but we can choose where we sell it. This tractor a little bit squirrely uh, under the load. It's not really an ideal tractor for this particular job. The trailer is a little bit too heavy for this particular <laughs> this particular tractor. So it kind of swirls us around a little bit, uh, and we do struggle uh, to accelerate on the uh, on the gradients as well. We're going to really crawl up here. It's our usual horn. We're getting regulars here. We should have a a frequent uh, a frequent user sort of discount pass or some or something. You know, like reward miles, like almost like air miles, but you know, tractor miles or something. I don't know. We've dumped so much stuff here recently. <laughs> It'd be nice to have like some kind of bonus membership scheme where we get more money, but that's just a pipe dream. I do like the way this uh, dashboard glows orange like that. That's a very nice little visual. So this should be the last that we need for the tip. We'll put us at 100% tipped. Let's find out. 10,000 to go. 98% transported. Okay, so we're going to need a little bit more and then the rest we can do what we want with. Uh, so, uh, let's just take a quick look at the field. Uh, we're 89% overall for the job, so there's still a fair bit of uh, harvesting to go. I would say 1% will be the last 2% of delivery needed uh, and then the remaining 10% of the job is just harvesting. So, still a fair bit of harvesting to go. We take a look at the map. There you can see what we've got left. So not a large chunk. Uh, I think we'd be lucky to get a trailer you know, out of that. We're probably looking more like half a trailer. Uh, but we can take that wherever we want once we get that little 2% out of the way. Uh, so we'll get that done. Close the job off. Get our 15 or so thousand. However much it's going to be minus the lease costs. What is the, uh, the payout? Let's have a quick look again. Uh, so the payout is 15958 and I think we're getting charged about 1500 for the lease. Uh, so we're looking at about 14 and a half, I think, for the payout, uh, plus whatever we get for the delivery of the crops uh, that are left over as well. So we could stand to make a little bit of extra cash. Uh, it's not going to be stellar by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, while I've been busy over here, my worker has seeded both of our fields. So those are done. We'll get crop growth turned on overnight and then turn it off again in the morning. Uh, and hopefully, we'll only have one stage of weeds. I'll be putting it on slow growth. I have been told by quite a few of you not to turn plant growth on overnight. Um, or else my weeds are going to grow 100%. I'm going to try it on slow growth. I'm going to see what happens. Hopefully, we'll be all right and we'll only get one stage of weeds. In which case, we can actually weed them rather than spray them. We'll get a stage of growth on our crops and then we can spray our fields because they'll need a second application of fertilizer. Make sure they both get sprayed this time. Uh, and then we'll be contracting, I suppose, and looking after our chickens until we're ready to harvest. So I'll get the last of this potato work finished. And, uh, oops, I'll, uh, I'll see you when that's done. It's so dark, it's so hard to see what I'm doing. And there we go. Yeah, I'll see you when I finish this contract. I have picked the field clean. The job is showing us 100%. We just need to deliver that last 2% of the crop. So it'll be a quick sort of uh, splash and dash dump here. There we go. That's 99%. There we go. Contract is finished. So, uh, let's 
before we complete the contract and lose the trailer <laughs> with the contents. Let's see where is the best price for potatoes. Uh, spud, 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 spud. Uh, best price is Port Northwest, uh, which is a little bit of a trek, but it's worth it for that extra sort of uh, payout on what we're getting right now. So we'll head on over there. We'll dump the rest of this uh, crop in the sell point there. Then we'll complete the contract and we'll see where we end up financially. Uh, we just cut across the grass verge here. There we go. So it's taken us a little over two hours to complete this contract. And the cell box... Oh, we're a bit... <laughs> we're, uh, we're way off. I thought we were further up than this. Gonna pick our way through these pallets now without crashing into anything. There we go. So the cell points around the back. Can I make my way around there? Yes, I can. Now it's the other side of that building, I think, if memory serves me correct. So let's swing our way around here. Ooh, crates came out of nowhere. There we go. There's the cell box. There we go, so how much can we get? Money's going up. That's good. Awesome stuff. An extra 11,000 for the potatoes. That's more than some jobs pay in their entirety. And that's just the tip. Uh, so, now we can complete the contract. And there we go. Uh, an extra 15 grand on top of that. So we're up to $64,000. Let's throw that in the bank quickly to reduce our payment overnight. Uh, where is... There we go. So let's... Uh, pay that off. Okay, so that'll reduce the debt slightly at midnight. It's going to still wipe us out and put us back down to zero. Maybe even beyond that. Uh, and I need to walk back to the store because I've got to go and get my Mahindra. I should have driven back there first. Never mind. Right, that's it for the end of this episode. Thanks for watching. I am Jim Bob. And when we come back tomorrow, we'll get our chickens up and running and uh, probably have to do some weeding. So I'll see you with another episode of Felsman Farm very soon. <laughs>